Hi there. I'm quite sure that you know what AI is and that AI applications are taking the world by store. You can do many things with, with AI, and we're going to show you how to use general applications such as AI R and large language models. So AI R is what you see here in the screen. And to generate this, you just generate, uh, need a prompt. And then from that prompt, you can generate the images, but it's not as easy as you might think. At the beginning, a while ago, I was just thinking that, okay, just put whatever prompt you want and you can get something, but it's not that easy. And see how, how detailed this prompt is. And to get these quality of images, you need to know how to use the models that, 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 that you are, you install. But also you need to know a little bit about this problem, how to use these language models that you have it in the application. Uh, so you might be also aware that in our channel, we make videos in the intersection of science, technology, engineering. So you might think of now how we can link this art generation with that and it linked per, 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 link perfectly because it's something that everybody now is doing. But also you might be aware that we do very specific topics such as CFD, CHI, aerodynamics, optimization. So here's the big question. So how we can link these applications now with, let's say CFD computational fluid dynamics or aerodynamics. So hopefully we're going to have our create many videos and we hope to show you how we want to use this but i have to say at this moment that i am uh, very critic of using ai with cfd and it's not because it doesn't work it's because it's incredibly expensive so yes i'm using it in cfd but i'm taking a different approach okay and showing you images just probably you can get an idea that i want just to to use ai just to do to to make less expensive the rendering of images in CFD, if I want to use it for CFD, also so no, and using some other techniques for optimization and machine learning and so on. So we're going to work with many topics, starting from the basic ones that you need to understand how things work and get an idea where are these models and styles and so on, which is AR generation. And you can do incredible things. You can do even videos that I hope to get there and you, you you will realize that it's not that easy and also work a little bit in language models and try to train some language models for some very specific uh, videos. Okay, so that's always this introduction and let's move to the first video. And I just want to stress that in this series of video, or in this video or in series of videos, I'm going to show you first how to install the application Okay, and then how to use it with small tutorials and maybe we go deep in the in, in details. So let's move with the first application. There are many related to AR. There are many applications. I want to, to show you the most popular one, but also the easiest one to, to install. And it is the one that you see in the screen now that is called Focus. And actually this is a relatively new one. And this is the one that now I'm using because it's very powerful, very easy to use, and most importantly, also very easy to, in, to install. So usually, uh, uh, this is application I use, generating and starting images, and then if I want to refine something, I move to more elaborate applications. Probably you're aware of stable diffusion, automatic 1111, or conf UI, stuff like that. I move there to, to refine things, but this, generate extremely good results. So the first thing is, let me go here and close the application. I already installed one, so I want to show you how to install this application. Before going into details about the detailed explanation and showing you a tutorial now with a first usage of this library, let me show you how to install focus in three or maybe four or five easy steps. So the first one, please come to here to this website here. This is the website where you have the original library and then go down here and download the library. So if you click here, this is a big library. And to mention that these are the steps for Windows. If so you're in Linux or Mac, the steps are different. I hope to prepare a video for the Linux installation. I'm likely it will be very similar for the Mac 
installation, but as you go here down, you, you, you have the steps. So after you download the library, you can put it anywhere you want. So see here that I'm putting that library in D and you're going to have this file in this format 7-zip. So if you're using the latest Windows installation, likely will support that format. So you click there, extract, but if you're not using that format, uh, the, the latest Windows update or for some reason, it doesn't recognize that format. So see that when you extract now, it becomes even larger. You can download the encoder or the coder here. You have, you search for 7 sit and you have it here, just it's a free one and you download. So it will extract the file. It will be a little bit time consuming, depending on your computer as well. Okay, so I extracted the file. You have the new folder. So this was a step two, extracting the file. Now we move a step two. Uh, so you enter here in the folder. Remember, you don't need to install anything. Everything is done automatically by by this this script. So now the next next step step would be step three. Double click here, and you are going to get this Windows. Windows might or might not. I know in my case I'm getting this one. So if you get this one, click here, more info, run anyway, and that's all. So after you do this, it's going to run a few scripts and it's going to download all the files. As I mentioned, remember that this it will take a lot of space. So see that now we're downloading a new model. So later in the video, we talk about what are those models, but this model is something of about six gigs. So in the end, you're going to get something about 12 gigs in this directory. So let's wait a little bit and hopefully this will be the last step. Okay, so in my case it's running and you put out this browser window and here, let me go here. So this means that when this windows put out means that the installation is done automatically is starting the server, the web server. So it might happen. I don't know if this doesn't happen, just open a web browser and copy this, uh, uh, this address here. And that's all. So here it is the three easy steps to install uh, Focus. So first download the file, extract the file, double click in the in run bad, and that's all. And if you get the blue screen, remember to uh, click in more info and install anyway. So that's all. At this point, you should have your library. And if you want, you can skip the rest of the video because then I just digress a little bit into some other libraries and probably small issues installing and I give a small sample. But this is all. Thank you. And if you want to keep continuing watching the video or switch to another channel, we don't get offended. So to install this application, let's move here. Okay. You need to get access now. You need to know where to get it. And this is the link that you have it there. So it's focus. Okay. You have it here. And I would just to point out as well that this user, I strongly recommend you to follow him. He, he has, or she, he or she, well, I know it's a he, uh, uh he has many, uh, many, many applications here, very interesting application that it really were worth looking at. And in this case, we're just looking at focus. Keep your eye here, your eye here and control net that that would be the next video, stable diffusion. So you go here into focus and we want to install this application. So you have here, well, look at one example of what you can generate is it's really impressive. So what is important here, just take your time, read now this, the readme file. And you, ha you have some, some instructions here. Important to mention that this is kind of focuses at hybrid between the stable diffusion and mid journey. 
okay something in between if you have used mcjourney you know that it's a little bit tricky to use then you need to enter into this core form and have your prompts and you have very specific entries and keywords and a stable diffusion also is a little bit tricky you have a little bit convoluted uh user interface we're going to look at that but it's an even that to make things very very easy with just one prone and it's not exposing to the user many options and then you you can just click in an advanced button and get more details as i show you but this is the easiest one to use and to install and you get fantastic results so to download just go here you have many installation methods i'm going to show you the installation method in windows the operating system, the native one. Then also I'm going to show you how to install in Linux. I would use Windows existing Linux for that, but the stats will be the same if you are in Linux and also in Mac, it will be very similar. So it's important that there is an, in all these models libraries, there is a strong dependency in the Python library that you are using. So most of these models are trained using PyTorch and you need to use the Python version 3.10. So if you are doing the, the, the standalone installation that you want to install your python the python and so on you have to be very careful to have you need to have that specific version okay if you have an older or newer version of your computer i recommend you to uninstall and install the new one or probably try to solve you no know, this dependency where you you call one library or the other however when installing this library you don't have that dependence when you download the library you just click here you're going to download uh, requirements, just to mention requirement clear, you need an internet connection just for the initial install and you need to have a GPU card. Okay. Uh, you can roll, run also the CPU, but it will be, will be time consuming and expensive. And now also when running, doing some cases, I'm going to show you, you know, how, how the GPU kicks in and memory usage and so on. So you download everything. I, and let me show you also in the video, I'm not going to stop every, anything. I'm going to show you everything real, real time because some people ask me how to install this and I'm having this problem. So hopefully if you have Windows 11, that's all internet connection, download this precise version, it should work out of the box. So you download and to mention as well that the files that we're going to, to download are big. So you better have uh, storage in your computer. So this is just to download the initial library. Then you need to download the models and models can be as, as, as small as one giga and as, as big, I have seen models of 12 gigs. Okay. And those models, when we're talking about models and let me go here and to show you this website, Civit AA, where you can download models. So models are those responsible for generating that that fantastic art, that vibrant, stylish, full in color, full in colors art. Okay, so these are different models. Sometimes you will see checkpoint. Checkpoint means that that model was was trained until that day or until this version that you can download here. And you see that there are many, 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 many models, different styles, things that you want to to do. So will be up to you to pick up one according to your styles or what you're aiming. So this is a very popular model, Jogger Now XL. So this is stable diffusion. There are many labor libraries to do so. So this is a very good website, Civit AA. So these are for models. And just to show you images as well, you go here and talking about, it's not only me images, look at it. You can generate also animations, everything done using AI. And you have to be very careful because you need precise prompts okay very specific prompts that they need to convey the information what you need to do but also you need to link application it's not like typing and do the, the the animation so hopefully also i will show you that so let me click here and look at how specific it is this prompt and you have also negative prompts so talking about things can be a little bit tricky so an example i show you I didn't use negative prompt, just a straightforward prompt, but it was really specific. In this case, look at how specific it is. And then negative prompt since, means that since that you don't want there. And then also you will have many more options here. You know, this parameter that is very important. And later we're going to, to talk about that and so on. So that being said, let's move to the installation. So here, my computer already let me I already have everything installed. I have, these are my three main libraries. And here I have the installation, the one I want to show you. So I have the library. Okay. Let me go here. Let me probably there, there was an update. Sometimes that is a nightly, there is a nightly update. So let me put 
this one here, the latest one. Okay. And the first thing that you need to do is to extract this file. Okay. So it's using this, this format, this seven zip format. So, so you have the latest Windows installation, uh, already Windows will identify all those formats. So you can go extract all and will extract, extract everything. If you don't have the latest Windows version, or you have another Windows that where you don't have uh, native support for this format, you need to, to download the library. So that one I recommend you, you can go and you just use 7 sit and this is the library to download that. Okay. So while it's downloading all, oh, let me talk a little bit. Now we're going to use a stable diffusion that probably is the most popular AI generation library, but there are many, okay? You have, you know, Dali, the one used, you know, the, the boon, everything it started from the, from the people of Chuck GPT, Mick Journey and so on. So probably these three are the most popular. So here you have some description about uh, stable diffusion and it's open source. Okay. So that's why also it's very popular. It's open source instead of Dali to my understanding, Dali 3 is not open source. So just get familiar with the technology where that is being used and so on. Uh, and here you have the web user interface also. So this is based, and this is what you're going to see when you use a stable diffusion. We're going to use focus that is, is slightly different. It's slightly different. No, I would have, I, I have to say it's, it's different. It's large. It's a way much easier. So there are many options here. And actually this is also kind of an easy interface. When you see the installation, the complete installation, you will see that it's very complicated. So here also you can put your prompt, generate your image, but here, this is a free service. It's very busy. So probably can take up to 10, 20 minutes. I don't know. Uh, talking about some other extra applications, libraries, models, you have control net. So keep an eye in here because this is, this will blow your mind. It's a fantastic library. And here you have a uh, prompt generator. I recommend you now just to take it here and look at the prompt. So let's say prompts and let me put a prompt here. Let me think about something. So now I'm looking at the wall <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind, to, to, to my mind. It is a wall. So I put a wall there and these are the prompts and look at that just to get an idea how to generate prompts. So you have some examples here, and this is what you need to do. Generate your prompts. And also I'd recommend you here. There is this website Lexica that is for prompt generation. Okay. So this is the Lexic, now the lingo and how to generate these prompts. So you can click in any image or you can search for something in particular. So let me click in this one that I found captivating, catch my eye. I look at this is the prom use. It will tell you also the model use, so you can look for the model. Remember that you have Civit AI, look for that model and that's it. You, you, you get it and you start to generate. Then you are going to have negative prompts, what you don't want to add. So it's taking a while there. I don't know what. Okay. So I have it here. Okay. So on the styles and so on. So explore a little bit the, your libraries and so on. So in my case, let's see what happens. Okay. I think it's already extracted everything. Let me see. Okay. Yes, it is done. What I was talking. So now that you extract everything, you will have this folder. You don't need to rename anything, but just to mention a little bit what you have and what I was talking about the Python version. So this version comes already with a Python version. So here you have the Python, the precise Python version with all libraries you need, you need to download anything. Okay. It's all the libraries necessary, PyTorch and the DPU libraries and open CV and all that stuff. It is included. So this is why I like this library, you have everything there integrated and then you enter into focus and you have the directories with the installation and everything. The most important one here that I just want to mention is models here and you go and here you're going to have your models. So for instance, you enter here, you have some models and you have some readme files. So I invite you to read the readme files later. We're going to talk about that. You have some styles here, and also we're going to see where are those styles. So you have everything. You need to change every, anything there will be up to you. You have also the readme file. The readme file here is this one, but it will be the same one as in the what size. So I recommend you just to take a time and read a little bit what is happening and how to use. So we're doing the straight 
out of the book, Windows installation. I mentioned that later, we're going to do another one. You can also do it using Google Collab. It's fantastic as well, but I recommend you to do it locally. And here you have you know, Linux and how to do your stuff. So later we're going to do those. So now that we have this, okay, let's go back and recap what we have done. Download the library, put it in any directory. There is no restriction. So here I'm working in D, extract everything, enter into the library, and then now you click here. Uh, take your time also to read what you have there. So basically this one is calling another script that you have here. So it will be entry with Python. So, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's this one. So you go here and this one. So it's calling this script and you can see what is happening. So basically every time that you, you, you use this one, we'll call that. It will look to date your library. And in the first time, let me do it right now. This will take a while. Remember, you need a good internet connection. So you were going to get first this screen, click here, click here, and then run anyway. And that's all. It's going to open a prompt you have here, and it's downloading files. Remember, those files are big files. So you install this one, it will be like a six gig. And depending on the models that you, you keep adding, is going to be more and more and more expensive so here's where everything is, is installed so you can look at the model checkpoint so and if you want a different model you can move it to the director as i mentioned about that that user Elias bill just keep an eye of what he's doing uh mention about also this website uh hogging face it's a fantastic website. Let me see here. And I recommend you to register. It's free. And all these models, large, large language models, kind of they are they are collected here. So you can look for different models and so on. So for instance, just to mention, let me look for this control net, which I mentioned is a fantastic model. So here you can get a description of what is happening with this model. And if you want to download, you have here files and versions and you can download here, click in this one in LFS, this arrow, or you can also use Git, no GIT, but let's do everything this is way using the graphical user interface. So look at that is downloading the model. Look at the size of the model, the Juggernaut, uh, Juggernaut model is the default one that it will use. Look at how big it is. So depending on also your internet connection can take a while uh while it's then loading just to go back here now the lexica that i was like, talking about this so yeah i invite you just to click in images see the prompt then you have some instructions there the library and so on here you have to generate you can generate your images but this is a paid service so you need to pay and that's why we're installing everything locally. You need to pay and you are going to get exactly the same results. Okay. Remember this is because it's paid doesn't mean that you ha they have something extra. They have exactly the same checkpoints that you are going to find on in the stable diffusion, GIT and so on. Uh, another library or service provider that I, let's call it, I like to use is this one, Night Cafe. You can register also. This is free publicity, by the way, I'm not related with that and yeah they have all the systems it's very good it's for free they also they have some challenges just to show you here and you just can input your your art here and you can get free points and you get access to many libraries just to show you something here for instance the latest challenges i like this one here so you click there you can get a description of the prompt what was used used and here, okay, so at this point, when I see that this put out this window, okay, it's because the installation, I know it is done. Okay, look at that, it installed, download everything. It is local and it's doing some final tuning there, connecting the applications. And there you go, up start accessible, use this direct this address to run the app. So this runs in, the, in your web browser. So in my case, and advice, I like to use uh, Microsoft uh, Edge. 
I think it's the best one, but Google Chrome also works well. Probably the, the, the worst performance I get is with Firefox, but it's up to you. So when you have this screen there, that's all. You install the application and you are ready to use it. Before I start to use it, let me show you. you Close here, close the browser, but your application is you close the browser, your application is still running. So in two days, you click here, you copy this address and you open a new window. So let me show you here. And now I'm in Firefox, the one that performed the words, you have it there. So close the browser, but also close the prompt window. And so now you close the whole, the whole library. Uh, okay. Before just. Coming back there, I was talking about uh, Night Cafe. So here you have the prompt. Sometimes you have the, ne also you have the negative prompt. So look at that negative prompt means that what you don't want in that image. So see that ugly, tilling, poorly drawn hands. You will see many times when you have human bodies, the hands, or you have extra me uh, fingers, missing limbs and so on. So the models has been trained specifically with these keywords and so on, just to give you the best, the best output. So yeah, this is, one style that I, I generated and to mention that there are many models. So here is, you look at the night cafe, you have all these models available. So it will be up to you to pick up one. You can train your models. You see here I'm training, training with my face, big pictures of me and many more models and so on. You go here, you can have put your prompt there just to, okay, let me use this one. You have advanced prompts. Then you go to a model. You have any style and you have different styles. Okay. You can get this style from an artist and so on and more advanced auction modifier and so on. So feel, feel free to play around. So maybe I think you, you can realize that it's not as easy as you might, might think. So now that we install everything, we know that you, you everything is working to launch application, just click here again. You can click here anime and realistic and it will run also, but it will download an extra model. So anime is a model for this specific style, realistic for this specific style. I'm not going to do it. Let me click there just to launch the library. So see that it's not going to download anything because you have it, but remember it's checking the latest update. So if there is something to update, it will download. Sometimes when you do something, by the way, just to point out something here and it requires to install a new library, it will download. So everything is done automatically in your size. You don't need to do anything. Talking about also video car, you need a good video car and it's recommended at least eight uh, giga, uh, gigas of video RAM. So here in my case, I'm using the, this one and that's all. Let's do something. So let's do the first one. So as you see, it's very intuitive, very easy to use prompt. You only have here the output and the input. And let me see here. Let me write here and Apple. Okay. Click generate and that's all. And let me open here also task manager, just to show you that all this stuff is done in the, in the GPU. So here is running the GPU and well, it's bursting all that memory. Okay. And no slow and memory. So that's why you need a good GPU. Otherwise this will be super, super slow. So maybe it might be better to go to, to the cloud basis services. So here you have your Apple and to mention now that when it comes to prompts, now probably you realize that it's something called prompt engineering that likely will, will become a very lucrative profession. Uh, you have to be very careful with the prompts. No, the prompts needs to be, needs to convey, I mean, okay. An action, something. It's not like you put here an apple and you are going to get in one image, two apples and the other three apples and so on. So if you want to have one single apple or an apple, in winter, you need to give all those keywords. Okay. So here's working my defense in my, in my computer also are kicking in. So I was saying that, uh, you need to avoid, you no know, some meaningless e inputs or, or, or giving some, some, some keywords. So for instance, you, you can say three apples. Okay. But. It is kind of an abstract concept, no, the tree. So you have the, the language model, language model. So just to show you, you put there two apples and then let me see, let me go four apples. Okay. So it's an abstract because it cannot count the application. So it will try to do something and maybe you're going to get a result, but, but be careful about that. Okay. You need to convey some information, avoid, uh, 
abstract concept because it's difficult for for the tool to to get it so see here that what is getting and the general rule is that when you put something here you need to put like kind of a, a noun an action and uh uh, and a full uh, a full sentence. Now you need to add your verbs and now and nouns and adjective and so on. So a modifier, a place, and a person or whatever an object doing something. So here we get this image. Uh, by no means you have four apples. You have seven, but probably here four apples. It was put in some girls there, some women there. I didn't ask for that, but it put it that. And now you can get an idea that you have this prompt and see here that you have three apples. Okay. So basically not even close to the four apples. So you can get an idea how how, how important it is to give these this this, this prompts and to give the right information. So what is fantastic about this is that you can take an image and you can build on top of that image. So we're going to do that later. I'm not going to, to talk about that because then it will get longer. But as you go here, input image, you can get this image that you already have there. And you just basically put it here and then you can modify your prompt and say, okay, redo this image and don't put the women. So, or, or you can do some in painting. In painting, can you go here and you paint here, you select, you put a mask and you can select all what you have. The three women there, you can select that and you can say, okay, put a tree there or erase the women or so on. So that can be like, like deleting the, the background and so on. You can image prone. And so, so it's very powerful. So I'll just show you a little bit what you can do. Then this is the image input. You can feel free to play with that. Then you have advanced. Here you have more advanced options. So here you have different aspect ratios. If you want the performer for the speed or better quality. So half in mind, better quality, more memory and so on. So random here is to put a random seat number. So as you leave it there, every image would be different. You fix it, every image will be the same, unless you change some other parameters. So you can get an idea that there are hundreds of parameters, how you want to generate that. So if so you change something, it will be different. So I like to put random. By the way, it's generating two images because here, image number two. So if you put one, it will generate one. So usually this is a concept. Many times, probably you have seen that generate four. So you generate four images and you pick the best of those images and then just refine, 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 refine. Talking about styles, here you have many styles. So these are the styles you know, specific to that artist. So here in focus, you have these styles that are fantastic, I have to say. So for instance, you can add focus negative. And just to mention, what are those negative styles? Here, I think I have some prompts. So I show you also in Night Cafe. So like stuff like bad anatomy, bad proportions, and so on. So focus has their own styles. You have to be, you have to be very careful because sometimes you add many enters there, and you are going to get strange images. So this is what you are doing. You can add your own styles. Then you have the models. Okay, the models is that the library responsible for generating this fantastic vibrant. No images, so you can add different models. So the default one is this one, but this is one you can add. Another model I will show you how to, to do that. Then you have Loda library. These are to refine, and I don't want to talk about that, but you can refine you know, what you are doing. And then here in advanced, you have this very important. So usually here you have a small explanation. You have some extra options mentioned that sometimes you have more options and things can get really really crazy uh here you have this tab here also you click there and then by you to click there you have a small explanation what is happening okay so it's quite easy you have an example there and you can get an idea so every single tab so you go here models or in models i don't have it but the styles also i don't have it. that help it will be here in setting you have okay you have a lock uh, history okay all the prompts that you put there Okay, let me windows, let me go back here. And I put input image here, I have the document help. So how to work with using no image. So usually no money, uh, there are not any more text to image. Now it's image to image, image to animation and so on. So that is how you control that. And finally, you're to end this video, mention that when you do everything here, you have this folder output all the images now it's going to save like this and then you have your outputs there and your log file so everything will be saved there 
C1 also you can download, you can click in the image here, you go and download, but it's the same information. So this is it. This is the, the easiest library to install and to use. I strongly recommend it. And this is the one, as I say, I use it for as a starting point. So to recap, remember the steps to install are super easy. Just download the file, extract, click here, and start using. So I hope you find this video useful. See you next time that we use install another library, a little bit more complicated, but the idea is the same. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.